Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. Six things that we learned from Chelsea 1, Manchester United 2. Marcus Rashford scores a penalty and a free kick. Two things that he doesn't do very often. He misses penalties. He also misses free kicks on a regular basis. And uh, yesterday he scored a phenomenal free kick. So I take off my hat. If you didn't see the match vlog, which you should watch it by the way if you haven't already, it's despite the result, I thought it was a fun little video. This is the moment that Rashford scored. All right, listen, Dills, if this doesn't go out of this ground, I owe you a pint. <laughs> yeah. All right, Rashford's got a free kick. Yeah. He's giving it to the screw with, yeah. Harry. Oh no. Oh my God. Yeah, that was Harry Pinheiro next to me. He's a Man United fan, and even he didn't think that Rashford was going to stick that one in the top bins, but he did. Chelsea were beaten 2-1. United came to Stamford Bridge. They didn't play that well either, to be honest. I don't think it was the best game of football. The best game of football last night was certainly played at Anfield, where there was 10 goals. We could have done with a bit of that yesterday, but Chelsea did get one. Michy Batshuayi with it. But let's move into the first of the six things that we're going to talk about today, and it is our right-back, Rhys James. I think that he was very positive yesterday. I think that Williams, the Manchester United left back, had a decent game. But again, I think we got a little bit unlucky with the referee last night. I think there are a few cards that should have been given out to certain United players that could potentially have changed the way the game was played. But from a physical standpoint, I was really impressed with what Reese James did. We know that he's a bit of a big lad. He likes to get forward. But he's also very disciplined when it comes to not actually making a stupid run that could see us end up struggling in defensive positions. So what I really liked from yesterday from Reese James was that he did get forward, but at the same time, he only got forward when it was actually available to him to do so. Played a few passes along the back lines to maintain possession for Chelsea. And overall, despite conceding the two goals, I thought Reese James was very, very solid for us yesterday. Moving into the second player, this is the second green box, and there's only two green boxes because we've really got to bring it back to reality here. And we'll go on to this point a bit later on in the video. But I did actually do pretty good with my prediction for the lineup for this game. I did not think Caballero was going to start in goal. I also didn't think that Alonso was going to be playing at left back. I thought Emerson would be back. We don't really know why he's not. A couple of little injuries in training. I think he's picked up and Frank doesn't want to risk bringing him back too soon. All good with that. Billy Gilmore with Jorginho as like a pivot. I don't think that would work. We did see Kovacic try and get forward, but I was quite impressed with Billy Gilmore's industrious side yesterday. I think Jorginho and Kovacic again, they did have the best games, but they also weren't bad. I still thought in the second half in particular, Jorginho and Kovacic were very good. But we've got to remember Billy Gilmore's age. We've got to remember that he could have gone out on loan this season. Frank said, no, Billy, I want you to stay here. You'll benefit fit from staying here. Billy didn't kick up a fuss. He knows he's not going to get that many minutes, but when he is on the pitch, we can really see that this guy can play. Last night, he tried to get forward a little bit as well, because obviously Jorginho doesn't really like doing that. So there was a bit more license for Billy Gilmore to actually try and carry the ball forward. And I do think, again, bringing age into consideration, bringing experience into consideration against Manchester United, I do think Billy Gilmore had a decent game yesterday for Chelsea. Again, bringing it back to something we said about Rhys James being very disciplined, I also think that Billy Gilmore is very disciplined in the way that he holds himself on the pitch for Chelsea. When you're a young lad like that, you kind of need to go for the jugular to do something crazy in order for Lampard to actually think, right, maybe this guy is the right player. That can also backfire. And in my match preview yesterday, I said that I thought Billy might be the player to make way if we were struggling in the game. But I actually think Billy was one of the players that were actually trying to create stuff for Chelsea from the midfield, transitioning into the attack. So speaking of the attack, we've got a yellow box for this man because he did score an absolutely phenomenal goal. That Mishibatshuayi goal would have been good enough to win any game of football, but it didn't. It was the equaliser and then Rashford kind of topped it with his ridiculous free kick. But Mishi's goal was single individual brilliance. It was fantastic the way he shoved off Harry Maguire, who's not the smallest of centre-backs. He's quite a big lad. He's a strong bloke. Mishi Batshuayi didn't really care about it, did he? Batshuayi got in. It was a beautiful finish into the bottom corner. And that just shows what Mishi can do when the ball is at his feet. And I don't think Chelsea yesterday were benefited by Willy Caballero in goal, whose footwork isn't as good as Kepa's. So there were times where we did have to kind of go a little bit more long ball. And Mishi Batshuayi is not the hold-up striker. We saw in pre-season that 
There's touches that he has on the ball which are just not good enough. Olivier Giroud potentially could have been the best option to actually hoof the ball up to. Giroud can bring it down. He can interlink with players around him. Mishibach UI last night, he wasn't doing that anywhere near enough. And despite the goal, I've given him a yellow box. You guys know that my thing with strikers is it's their job to score goals as priority. And if they don't score goals, then they have to offer something else to allow others to do so. Mishi got his goal, but there wasn't really any interconnecting play to give us any other opportunity. United and Chelsea, both teams last night, didn't really create that many opportunities. And I think a lot of that was down to Mishibachi Wai just not being able to involve Hudson-Odoi, Christian Pulisic around him because his hold-up play just wasn't good enough. That being said, I don't want it to be seen as me being too harsh on Mishi. It's why I've given him a yellow. I could have given him a green because that goal was absolutely brilliant and it's exactly what we need Mishi to do when he's on the pitch for us in terms of getting himself in with a chance of potentially taking over from Tammy, which I don't think is going to happen. Mishi just needs to score and yesterday he scored a brilliant goal, got us back into the game and it was just another flipping set piece that undid us. So point number four, we need to get into the red boxes. I don't want Chelsea's form to drop. We've won seven in a row and then we've lost to Manchester United in the Carabao Cup. I need to keep it real and I need to say what I saw. Alonso last night was not good enough. That was back to the Alonso we saw at times last season where the performances just weren't great. And I think that the reason Alonso has been pretty good since he came in for Emerson is, in fact, he's actually been very good since Emerson got injured last night was a massive dip. The reason that Alonso was good is because there was that pressure of having knowing that Emerson was the first choice and that he needed to impress. Again, last night, it just seemed as though Alonso sank back into this, oh, well, Emerson's still injured. I can switch off and make stupid tackles and give away penalties. And it was, it was frustrating to watch Alonso last night. Going forward as well, we know that's probably the best part of his game. Even though he's a left back, it is his offensive play that's actually the real positive with Alonso usually. Defensively, he was poor. And going forward yesterday, he was toothless. So it was bad. Back to the Alonso that we don't want to see. There are two different types of Marcus Alonso. They're the ones that scored two at Wembley and there's the ones we saw last night and uh, we don't want to see it again. So point number five, I've put these two players together because I didn't want to single one of them out individually, which would be very easy to do. Pulisic and hudson Adoy. Yesterday, they didn't do enough, in my opinion. I think that hudson Adoy came in for a lot of criticism from Chelsea fans, particularly on Twitter. People are saying, oh, he just signed a new six-figure deal. He's got to be doing a lot better than this. But at the same time, he has been performing very well. There's just been a couple of games where he's not been delivering assists or he's not scored a goal. So it's a little bit tough on hudson Adoy at the moment because... He has just come back from a very serious injury, but at the same time, I feel as though he needs to take more risks. He was playing up against Williams yesterday, who's a young lad for Man United, and with hudson Adoy's talent, I wanted to see him try and drive at that Manchester United back line a little bit more. We saw when Michy Batshuayi drove at Harry Maguire, Michy managed to score, and Callum is the player who's got that ability to be able to run at defenders, run past defenders, and yesterday he looked nervous. He didn't look as though he had that spark that we've seen in the early game since he came back from injury. Pulisic, I've put them together in this box because I don't think Pulisic got into the game enough. I think in the first half, we hardly saw him. In the second half, everybody kind of got a bit better for Chelsea and Pulisic did get himself into the game a little bit more, but it wasn't his day. And I think that was a lot down to the fact United liked to sit back. They were trying to get us on the counter-attack. And let's just remember, we lost the game due to two set pieces. We didn't really get beaten in open play, which is a stupid thing to say in football because the only stat that matters is the goals. And we didn't score as many goals as United. Therefore, they've got an easy trip to Oxford or Colchester at home, I think they've got. And City go to Oxford in the Carabao Cup quarter-final. This was a game that Chelsea could have won. It's a game that we should have won. And I don't know necessarily if it was Frank tactics. I think that maybe bringing on Pedro is kind of pointless. Pedro didn't offer anything when he came on the pitch. It's very easy for people to say, yeah, hudson Adoy, Pulisic, these guys are the future wingers for Chelsea. Pedro's past it. We shouldn't even bother bringing him on. Pedro is a player who has got good energy. He never stops running. He always gives 100%. But last night, it didn't work for him either. So credit to Manchester United. They turned up to Chelsea, didn't play very well and beat us for the second time in a couple of months. So it could be said that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has got Frank Lampard's number. But if we look into box number six, the top six, Chelsea's results against the top six are going to be the difference this season 
in what could be a good year, we could finish in the top four and not beat any of the top six. That could happen. But it is very unlikely. And so far, we've played United twice. We've been beaten by a very average Manchester United team twice. Are we a little bit scared to play against some of these big teams? I don't know if it is that. But it's not something we can avoid. It's not something we can deny at this point because we played the same way against Liverpool. We came out and played so much better in the second half. But in the first half, it was kind of toothless. And last night as well, that toothless performance in the first half left Chelsea always chasing the game. When Rashford scored the penalty, we needed an equaliser. Then when Batshuayi got the equaliser, we did look like we could have gone forward and scored again but we didn't have enough going forward. There wasn't enough quality on the pitch. And something that Chelsea have done a lot this season is players are seeing the passes before they even happen. So the runs are being made. The instinctive, direct approach just wasn't there last night from Chelsea. And we've got to start performing against these bigger teams because come the end of the season, when we're looking at either the trophy cabinet in May, we're at the Carabao Cup now, which leaves the Champions League, the Premier League, and also the FA Cup, which arguably are three more difficult trophies to win than the Carabao Cup. There's less games to play in the Carabao Cup for a start. So you might think that I've been a little bit too carefree, as my tattoo on my arm would say, and the Chelsea slogan would go in this video today. But at the same time, it is the Carabao Cup. And I know that when you go to the latter stages, fans are like, oh, well, of course we want to win it. It's a trophy. But when we do go out, we also need to remember that the most important games are the Premier League games. So I don't think Chelsea fans need to be getting too reactionary over this and getting too negative, thinking that it's all going down the drain and Frank's never going to beat any of the teams in the top six. We've still got to play Arsenal. They're not looking great. We've still got to play Spurs. Same to be said for them. We've also got to play Manchester City away in a couple of weeks, which is kind of... you. Uh, no, it's not a free hit. I was going to say it's a free hit because no one expects us to play, but we do need to start thinking tactically how we set up against the bigger teams because we're struggling at the moment. Two defeats to Man United. It's not what you want to see. Beaten by Liverpool as well, despite a good second half performance. Frank's got to work on that. So drop a like rating if you did enjoy this video. Sadly, we never really enjoy losing. And I know that the videos when we do lose are not quite as upbeat as when we win. So hopefully we can bounce back at the weekend away at Watford. It's going to be a tough game. They've not won yet this season. And they're a little bit toothless going forward. But they've stopped losing games, so they're getting more difficult to beat. So Chelsea are going to need to be on their A game at Vicarage Road to get the three points, to bounce back and start a new winning streak under Frank Lampard. With Ajax to come at home next week, we've got tough games coming up after the international break and Palace before the international break as well. So some tough fixtures coming up for Chelsea. Leave a like rating if you enjoyed this video today. I do apologise if the energy seemed a little bit off from me. I've got a few stressful things going on at home right now with family and at the same time, Tilda and I are moving back to London this week, so that's always stressful booking vans, trying to like arrange key collections and all that kind of stuff. And I'm ill, so it doesn't really help matters. But tomorrow, I will be doing my Premier League predictions and my Watford preview. I will catch you guys later. Goodbye.